So, are small chargers better? They're certainly cheaper, at least on a one-off or two-off basis. So, depending on the funds available and all the things you need to do to charge, they may be one way to go. There are a lot of options out there. Today is going to be focused on what's available on the lower wattage end from Anchor currently. One of these, of course, has the same model number as one that's already tested from a while back, but it's the newer version being tested here. To just burn that surprise, it's exactly the same performance as the old one, of course. But we'll dig into it with more detail later on. There is an affiliate link, which earns me a couple percent, but costs you nothing in the description, as well as links to more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. I'm going to go through these real fast, because there are six of them to get through. There's no specific rhyme or reason to the order. First up is the 25 watt compact charger. This is kind of an oddball. It's tiny, but it's also only 5 watts less than the 30 watt. Every charger I look at today is going to meet some basic criteria. All of them have safety listings, and all of them have a 6 in a circle. The safety listing is important because this makes sure the device went through some kind of validation testing to make sure the device will fail in a more safe manner. It doesn't mean it's better, it just reduces the risk of using it. The six in a circle is an energy efficiency mark and states the charger meets the basic criteria for efficiency and idle power usage. There's a whole big lookup table for this. This charger has a few less modes of operation, but unlike a lot of the early low wattage chargers I have looked at, this one has PPS or programmable power supply mode. This way it can go up to 25 watt level with an 11 volt output. So not bad. The voltages fixed are only five and nine. So this is really a phone or a small device charger, not made for topping off a laptop. So certainly some limitations here, but for $10, can you complain? In terms of its basic performance, there is no real surprises here. The ripple is not amazing, but for a compact charger, something has to give. The efficiency could be better, but again, compact charger, something has to give. The basic DC voltage was accurate enough, so it's fine as a basic charger. One thing to note is in the incredible efficiency at 0.1 watt out. This is a great option to leave a watch charger or similar device plugged in all the time without wasting too many watts. Thermally, this charger did fine. The efficiency being a little lower is okay when it only does 25 watts total, so it was able to keep up with this amount of heat generation and didn't shut down or get too hot. Next up is the bigger charger in today's lineup, the 47 watt Anchor Nano 3523, how many names does this thing have? Also, A2039 USB charger with two USB-C ports. This charger is also the heaviest and largest of the bunch. It's also the most expensive, but also the most efficient. The charger does have smart power allocation, so when plugging and unplugging cables, if the power level isn't exceeded, it will adjust voltages on the fly and keep the port on. The charger does not have a 12 volt mode, but technically could achieve this with a PPS negotiation. The PPS mode is current limited, so don't expect the full 45 watts for Samsung fast charging devices. In terms of the performance of this charger, the DC output voltages looked fine. The ripple did rise and fall depending on the power level and voltage selected. The efficiency is good though. It's a decent charger. Thermally, this charger did get a little hot, but it did hold up for the full hour. So no shutdown, but still, it could concern some people. It was far from the hottest adapter I've seen though. Okay, the next USB charger is the 20 watt two port charger. The only one today with a USB A port. I know, I know. I'll never buy a charger with a USB-A port. I think they're still useful for some people, so I don't discount them just yet. My thermal camera, for example, requires a dumb USB-A port to charge. Even if the device has USB-C, it can't do PD or power delivery, so I still need one of these around. Anyway, this charger is pretty basic in terms of performance, but it's also cheap. The efficiency and idle are among the worst for today. The general output voltage looks fine, just a bit low on the efficiency compared to the others looked at here today. Thermally, no surprises at all. This one is a little toasty, but it can hold the power level, no problem. Next up is the 312 charger. This is a 30 watt single port charger. It has a 12 volt mode and it has a PPS mode. So it kind of has more features than the newer generation of chargers. The cost is good, the efficiency is better, the idle power is excellent. Seems like a solid little charger. The 20 volt mode being present means this charger can likely handle charging some laptops. It may not be able to power them and charge them at the same time, but in a pinch, it should be functional. This is the second charger today with a very high efficiency at vanishingly low power levels, nearly 60% for ultra low power devices. This is excellent. 
The ripple voltage and DC voltage levels were also among the best of the chargers tested today. So if you need a bit of a more stable voltage power supply, this is one of the better options. Thermally, this thing got hot. It didn't shut down, but yeah, it lets it get real toasty. So using this at 30 watts all the time may not be the best idea, particularly because the components inside are going to get so hot they probably won't last as long. If you are charging a phone or some other lower power devices, it won't be at that power level for long, so it should be better. But yeah, just something to note here. Hot potato. Okay, yet another charger. How many of these things are there going to be? So many. 25 watts this time. This is another basic charger with less modes of operation. This one is about average efficiency, cost is okay, idle again is very good. This is really an average device. Someone has to be it, not bad. Thermally, also fine. Its case is large enough that it can get the heat out and keep things reasonable. Hopefully it lasts a decent amount of time with some more reasonable thermals. Okay, last up, probably the most popular charger of this bunch and the one people really want. The Anchor 511. Wait, didn't I do this already? Yeah, I did. But that was the A something or other model number, and this is the new B2147. It's the same charger. Yeah, most certainly. Same device. The performance is nearly identical to the old one. In terms of modes of operation, you don't get 12 volts, but again, the 16 volt PPS mode provides a path to that if you need it. The efficiency is not bad, but the cost is high. They're really charging for that subcompact charger. In terms of the DC power performance, no surprises again. Subcompact chargers have a little more ripple voltage. The charger is certainly being pushed to its limits for the size. Also, you are paying extra to have it be smaller and lighter by what I am going to call a negligible amount. Bring one less pen and you have room for a larger, better, cheaper charger now. Thermally, this is also a hot potato. It's so tiny and it still has to get the heat out. It does a surprisingly good job of getting the heat out to the surface though, so this isn't bad. Hopefully the internals aren't that much different in temperature. Still, I'd rather it be cooler. Okay, moving on to isolation. This is the thing that separates the danger side, the mains, from you on the low voltage side. These adapters were all adequate. Some were worse than others. The real compact ones did a little bit worse, but in general, these are all not cause for concern and they shouldn't cause that tingling feeling you get sometimes from the metal body of a laptop or a phone screen. Okay, time to compare these chargers. They were all between 20 and 47 watts, so the lower end of the scale, but not too low. So no real low, low and slow chargers here. All of these have the ability to negotiate for some kind of higher voltage mode. PPS is pretty much universal on all of them as well. So in terms of the features, they seem to be pretty good. 12 volt is hit or miss, as is the case on newer other power adapters now. In terms of weight, the Anker 30 Watt Nano 3 B2147 version takes the cake. It's amazing that 30 watts is achievable with that small and light of an adapter. The adapter, of course, also wins for the size. It's minuscule and did do the 30 watts for an hour. Gets pretty damn hot while doing it, but it did it. But the real question is, does that slightly smaller size versus, say, the 312 charger hurt value? In terms of value, yes. The Nano 3 30 watt is expensive, and the 523 is also more expensive. So if you want modern chargers, which perform almost exactly the same as the older chargers, you pay more. And looking at the general value terms, the 25 watt and 20 watt chargers are better value, but the 312 isn't far behind. When looking at the idle graph for these, it's no surprise. They all do very good here. None of them really used a lot of power. The power quality is zero for all of them, and it's common for these small adapters to have essentially no line filtering, so they tend to be quite noisy on the current voltage harmonic side of the AC voltage, but they were very, very low values. This is why they're all zeros here. The 312 takes the win though, and being near value winner, it's not a bad option. The average power consumption graph is a bit more spread out, but basically all of these are meeting the basic requirements for their respective power levels. The 20 watt 2 port is probably a skip. The 30 watt 312 again surprises, nearly matching the more expensive Nano 3 30 watt. In general, at this scale, the efficiency improves a bit as the power supplies get a little bit larger, so no real surprises to see that trend play out here. This is about as good as can be generally expected for power levels like this for a mass-produced charger. Conclusion time. Okay, so what's good about these? Well, they all work. 
They're all solid mid-tier performance devices. None of them are going to make my best of list, but that doesn't mean any of them are bad. They're all just okay, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just what you get. The extra money paid for a Nano 3 I think is wasted for a charger that's just a little more compact. I'd rather just get the bigger one that is like half the price, but in reality, I'd probably go with one of my top picks. In terms of what I use for the lower power range, well, the IKEA 45 watt, the Google 30 watt, and the Apple 20 watt. The IKEA wins for value, but none of these really win for the size and weight category, but they all win for efficiency. Of course, really, I use a power factor corrected supply, but that's a whole other topic. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.